What's going on folks? Today on Stu's Garage, we're gonna be doing a uh, electric fan conversion on this uh, Mustang GT. Uh, this is obviously not the Drift Fox, it's my buddy Anthony's car. And um, like I said, we're gonna be doing an electric fan conversion. So if you watch my videos, you've seen me do the fan conversion on my car. Um, it was a manual switched uh, electric fan. And it's a little bit more difficult to do. Uh, this one, this method costs a little bit more money, but you don't have to think about it. It's automatic. And so let's go ahead and show you what you're gonna need to do to get this done. So first of all, you're gonna need your fans. Um, these are pretty much, uh, these fans came with my radiator. These things are super cheap. If you see anything that looks like this with the shroud on it, um, I would not suggest to buy it. I don't like this setup. I had this on my car, I took it off. So we're gonna get rid of these fans and we're gonna put this single large fan on. And I'm gonna take this shroud and adapt it to fit that large fan. So find yourself a decent fan. Um, good fans to use are the V6 Mustang fan or find yourself a good Ford Taurus dual, dual fan. That's the cheapest way to go and I think you can get those things brand new for like 60 or 80 bucks. Um, so we're gonna convert that in just a second. The next thing, all the rest of this stuff you can get on late model restoration. You have your thermostat housing um, and the reason why we're swapping this out is because this has the hole in it for the temperature sensor that comes with the control unit. Uh, you may or may not have this port here on your car. It may be a bleeder screw for you, or you may not have it at all. So that's why we have to change this thermostat housing. So earlier, I went ahead and I put some RTV sealant on this temperature probe that fits inside of that. And that's just gonna dry, so it'll be ready by the time we're ready to install it. Uh, next up is your temperature controller that comes from LMR. This thing makes it super easy to install. It looks like a bunch of wires, but really it's just four wires. It's like power ground and some other stuff, but the instructions are very clear and we're just gonna follow those. Um, so, and it also comes with its own relay and fuse and your temperature sensor connects to this wire here. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna pull the old fan out and we're gonna slap this new stuff in and hopefully it works. Okay guys, just like uh, you saw in my last video, you've got your water pump slash fan bolts right here. There's four of them and they use a 7 16th wrench. Uh, you have to disconnect the fan first, unbolt your fan shroud and your fan and shroud will all come up as one piece. So we're gonna go ahead and get that out right now. All right, next up, after you pull your shroud out and your fan, you're gonna have to disconnect your reservoir. Um, there's a few nuts that hold this thing in. You just have to look and see where they are. And these are 10 millimeters, if you're still using the correct OEM ones. And uh, unless you have an aftermarket reservoir, you're gonna need to keep this one around. And uh, if you do get an aftermarket reservoir, make sure you have one that holds enough liquid. So speaking of reservoirs, uh, this is the one that I bought for my car. It's too small, so I ended up making a homemade one. But in the meantime, I did use the OEM one, which is still good enough. But if you see one of these and it's like a foot long or even less, don't buy it. You need a bigger one. Yeah. All right, one other thing I forgot to show. You're going to have to loosen up your belt because the bolts that hold your fan on also hold this pulley. So in order to get that loose, you do have to loosen things up. Um, so once you get that off, go ahead and throw your bolts back in to hold your pulley on. All right, next up, we're gonna go ahead and pull off the thermostat housing and that's gonna be what your um, coolant hose actually goes into. And it's only two bolts to get that off, but one bolt is usually gonna be blocked by the hose clamp. And so what you're gonna have to do is actually unscrew this hose clamp turn it so that it's out of the way, and then you can get to that top bolt there. The second bolt is over on the other side. You can see it down there. It's a little bit of a tight fit, but if you're a little bit creative, you'll be able to figure out how to get to it. I'll be using ratcheting wrenches, which are super easy to get in tight spaces with. All right, it's pretty tight work getting the thermostat housing off of there, but once you finally do get it off, 
uh, you're going to want to make sure that you get all the gunk and crud off of uh, your intake side of the, um, of the thermostat. And next thing you're going to do is you're going to RTV. You don't have to do this, but I like to put RTV on my thermostat, put it into the housing, and then RTV the surfaces with the gasket and put that all back together. All right, so I went ahead and slapped in the thermostat. And as you can see, this is the correct orientation of your thermostat. You want the spring portion pointed towards your block. It does go in both ways. And if you put it in wrong, some weird things are gonna happen to your car and you're gonna be really confused. So this is how it goes in. So next, I'm gonna go ahead and add some RTV and put the gasket on this. And uh, then we're gonna get ready to put it back inside the car. But before we do that, I've got to adapt this shroud and uh, do a little bit of cutting to that. Okay, we've got the new thermostat housing back in. As you can see, it's a pretty good squeeze, but we got it in there. Uh, next up, we're gonna be putting the radiator shroud in with the new fan. And just wanted to show you guys this. My handiwork was pretty good on this one. I really like the way this thing came out. So we're gonna slide that in place. Um, the tabs on that actually mount right to the factory locations. Even though this isn't a factory radiator, it's still set up just like the factory radiator. So we're gonna bolt that thing in and next up we're gonna wire it. All right, one last thing before we slide the new shroud in. Um, you're gonna need to do something about your reservoir. Luckily with this setup, the reservoir fits right back on just like it did from the factory, so we don't have to do any crazy modifications there. So it's attached directly to the shroud. All of this stuff is ready to slide right back into where it goes, and these tabs will connect right back to the old locations. All right, so we got everything installed. The fan controller is all wired up. The only thing we have to do at this point is see where the temperature is set and then permanently mount it. We didn't mount it because it's easier to adjust when it's off the car like this. Um, just a tip to you guys, your 12 volt ACC source, your keyed power source, 12 volt, um, you're gonna wanna use your wire off of the ignition coil and the rest of the wire, like I said, it's gonna come in the, in the directions if you have um, an aftermarket controller like what we did here. So there's no need for me to really explain. Um, I showed you the 12 volt power, ground is pretty much anywhere. Your battery positive is here and ground, like I said. So that's all you pretty much need to know. So we're gonna go ahead and bleed the system right now. We're gonna add water to it. Um, if you don't have yourself one of these funnels, you absolutely need to get one because it's pretty much impossible to bleed a Fox body without it and you can do any car with this thing. So it makes it a breeze. So we're gonna bleed this system and that's gonna be it. So that's pretty much it folks. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.